Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about what is double clutching when referring to the driving technique. So we're going to talk about what the process of it is and then talk about why it's necessary. And it's really only necessary with cars which don't have synchronizers uh, with a manual transmission. And so I think the why question is the part that kind of confuses people the most that's the most difficult to understand. Uh, but first let's go ahead and walk through the process of what you're actually doing. So here we have our accelerator pedal, our brake pedal, and our clutch pedal. The first thing you're going to do is let your foot off of the accelerator pedal. The second thing you're going to do is press in the clutch. Uh, third thing you're going to do, we're going to, in our scenario, be going from fourth gear to third gear. Uh, so we're going to pull it out of fourth and put it into neutral. The fourth thing we're then going to do is release the clutch. And the important thing to realize here is that this isn't, you know, this like tedious step-by-step -step process. A lot of this is kind of happening simultaneously. There's overlap between these steps. So it's actually a very smooth and quick process. It's not like, you know, first step, let off accelerator. Second step, press in clutch. Like those are kind of happening simultaneously. There's overlap between these steps. Uh, so it's a very quick, smooth process. Moving on to number five, because we're downshifting, we need to raise up the engine speed to match the gear speed. So we're gonna blip the throttle, that's for number five. Uh, if you were upshifting, going from three to four, then you would leave your foot off the gas and let that uh, engine speed drop down uh, to your gear speed uh, because it would be rotating lower. So you wouldn't blip the throttle in that case. But we're going from fourth to third, so we blip the throttle. Then we press in our clutch and then we put it into our third gear and then we release the clutch and then you go on about your way driving it in third gear. So that's the process of double clutching and as I mentioned it's smooth, there's overlap between these steps and it's a very quick process. But why is it necessary? And so that's the part here that's all about these synchronizers um, and you know how they're involved in this process. So in order to understand why, we need to look at you know, the inside of a transmission. So here we've got our engine, which is coupled to the flywheel. Uh, it's got a pressure plate around the clutch. So there's your clutch disc. Uh, and then that clutch disc is going to gear up to a lay shaft, uh, which will rotate your gears three and four. Here is your output shaft with a collar on it. And then here is your gear selector. So you can see if it pivots about this point and you pull that fourth back, it's gonna push this forward, pushing this forward and pushing that collar into fourth gear. Um, so if we were gonna be going into third gear, we push it forward and that would slide it into there. So the important thing to realize looking at this diagram is that each individual color uh, is, can rotate at its own speed. So in red, red will always rotate together. So the engine, the flywheel, the pressure plate, those are always rotating together. In blue, uh, some of these gears can rotate on their own because these are on bearings on the output shaft, uh, but they will always be rotating with the lay shaft. So their speed may differ, uh, but they'll always rotate with the lay shaft. And so everything in blue is always rotating together. And then everything in green, so your collar, which is splined to the output shaft, uh, will always be rotating with the output shaft. So in different scenarios, everything can be rotating together. It's all synchronized, for example, when you're in gear, uh, or everything can rotate separate. Uh, so if you're in neutral uh, and you have your clutch pressed in, everything is rotating at its own speed. Okay, so let's walk through this process again, but looking at what's going on inside. So first we're releasing uh, the accelerator pedal. Second, we're pressing in our clutch. So now this and this are no longer rotating at the same speed. And so that means also at that time when we've pressed in that clutch, uh, the collar is also rotating at a different speed uh, from the gear. So everything's rotating at a different speed at that time once you have your clutch pressed in. So you release the clutch and now what you've done is you've linked up the engine to everything in blue. So everything in blue and red is now rotating together. And so what your goal with doing that is, you can press the throttle so that when you go into gear three, you now have influence over gear three speed because it's connected to the engine. So you blip the throttle, you bring this up to speed with the collar, and then once these two speeds are close, you press in that clutch, and the reason you're doing that is because you don't want all of the mass of the engine uh, influencing that gear shift. And so once you press in the clutch, these two are at relatively the same speed. You press them in together. You don't have that influence from the engine, so it's, uh, you know, it's not much mass that you have to actually bring to the same speed. So you connect those together, and then you've already, you know, this is a very quick process, and so then you let out the clutch uh, once you have that in gear, and that's gonna be a very smooth process for shifting the gear. 
So the reason why you do it is because you, you let out the clutch and that gives you control over the gear speed versus the synchronizer speed. And you wanna match those, press in your clutch, engage them, release your clutch, and then have everything moving together. So if you have a, a regular transmission, which most of you out there, you know, driving uh, a regular production car on public roads, that's what it's going to have. It'll have synchronizers in there. The process is a bit different. So you release the gas, you press in the clutch, and now when you're shifting over to the next gear, what's happening is everything is at a different speed. So you've released the clutch, you're in neutral and you're about to go into the next gear. So your engine is at one speed, your transmission as far as these gears are at another speed and your output shaft is at a completely different speed. This is at your wheel speed, of course, because this is going to your differential. So what that synchronizer is doing is as you bring this to third gear, it's going to match the speed of the gear to the collar. And so that'll allow you to get in gear. And then once you're in gear, you can blip the throttle. These are now all rotating together. And the only speed differential is between your engine and your clutch. And so you'll blip the throttle. Uh, if you're downshifting, you'll match your engine speed to your clutch speed, and then you'll release, and then you'll have that smooth engagement. So the, the benefit here of the synchronizer is that you don't have to have the clutch engaged in order to match the speeds. Uh, and so, you know, that's why with modern cars, you don't ever have to do this double clutching technique um, because you have synchronizers that match the speed of the gear. So what is this technique useful for? Well, basically, if you have a transmission that doesn't have synchronizers, or if you do have a transmission with synchronizers, but they're completely worn out, uh, this is a method that you could use to shift gears uh, where you ha wouldn't have to worry about replacing that synchronizer uh, if you got good enough at it and you could match your engine speed to that collar speed and then get it in gear without using the synchronizer simply by matching the speeds. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below.